This section on DMED console software is about performing genotyping with a focus on genotyping requirements and a description of genotyping methods. First, let's get a picture of what data has and has not been processed. So let's show information on the workspace. There's one data set in this workspace, set one for which there's 41 sample files, 42 intensity files or cell files, and only two genotype results files. Each data set uh, can store up to one genotype result file for every one intensity data file. So with 42 intensity data files, we should be able to get up to 42 genotype results files, one for each sample. So more data in this data set needs to be genotyped. There's a number of ways to initiate genotyping. First, let's look at all the cell files we have. Let me double click these columns to auto space them. All right, so each of these rows represents a different cell file. There are 42 rows or sample or cell files that we have. Uh, in this case, our, the relevant column we're looking at is the number of chip files per cell file. In other words, number of genotype result files for each one of these files. We have two cell files that have results files already. I can sort on this to see that, yes, that they are the only two files that have been processed. And then the rest haven't been genotyped. So what I could do is I could select all the ones that haven't been genotyped and say perform genotyping and that works just fine. I could select all these uh, rows and say perform genotyping in which case the two that have already been genotyped won't be genotyped again. Uh, another way of accessing it is by just select uh, control clicking on the intensity data all group and perform genotyping. Again, this does the same as selecting all the rows in the table and saying perform genotyping. Uh, if you forget where these commands are, you can also get it from the toolbar, perform genotyping, in which case you may be asked which group of intensity files you want to genotype. Or you can get it from intensity data, perform genotyping. So let's proceed uh, with some genotyping. Here's an example. Two of the files like I said we have already been genotyped, so they won't be genotyped. We're going to exclude these files. There's one more error in the set, and that is that the first sample is missing its sample file. A sample file is required for each cell file, and not only that, the sample file needs to have a valid sample type, like sample or control, and a valid marker list listed like DMET plus all, for example. If that information isn't found for a particular cell file, the cell file will not be processed. In this case, we're not going to try to fix the problem by finding the, the AR file. We're just going to continue with the subset of cell files that have no problems. OK, so here's the main genotyping window. You start by selecting how you want to genotype your data, your analysis configuration from this pull-down window, there's four options available. To learn more about these methods, you should go to the DMIC console help. Towards the end, there's a description of genotyping methods. Uh, let's look at dynamic versus fixed boundaries. So I mentioned the four methods. The first method in this table, fixed genotype boundaries version 2, is the one that's recommended for general use start with that one. Uh, there's another method called dynamic genotype boundaries. Uh, it's an alternate method that you can use to describe the differences between those methods. Let's look at this screenshot below. So here we have a cluster plot for one particular marker that distinguishes between AA, AG, and GG genotypes for this marker. In, to, in the three clusters. Each data point represents one sample or one chip file. And you can see that the ones that are color-coded red, blue, or green are the ones that are 
fully called using the original fixed boundaries method. In the reference model file that's used, if a data point falls outside those hard boundaries, then it will be no called, which is these gray dots. So what we've done in the updated version of the fixed boundaries is expand the boundaries for well-separated markers to improve the call rate without sacrificing accuracy. And so these additional gray no calls will now be assigned calls. So that's the updated fixed method. With the fixed method, the boundaries are fixed. They do not move. Whether you throw one sample into the analysis or a thousand samples, the boundaries are what they are. The gene types from one sample don't influence the gene types that are calculated for the other samples. In contrast, the dynamic method has boundaries that update based on the data set that's fed into it. So in the second figure, E2, we have an example of a marker whose three genotype clusters are less well resolved and they're color coded by the predicted genotype. So using the fixed boundaries version 2 method you can interpret that the middle cluster, the blue, there's a lot of gray X data points that maybe should have been called as the het blue cluster but instead of being no call and what may be worse is that we have a bunch of the minor homes that are being called as minor homes, whereas they may actually belong to the middle head cluster. If for this data set you apply dynamic boundaries, what you'll see is an updated calling where you can see that the head cluster has now moved a little bit over to the left or adapted to the observed data in order to call more of the data points that appear to be head and call and miscall fewer of the data points that appear to be minor home. The dynamic method may improve results. It may, for some markers, reduce the accuracy. It's one of those things that if you have data that you suspect would benefit from dynamic boundaries, you should try that method and then compare the results between methods. Now that you've selected your gene typing method, you should also verify that the output folder is what you want it to be. It will default to the last place that you saved it. In this case, I saved my initial results to a folder that I named chip files fixed v2 as a shorthand for saying I'm saving my genotype results in the fixed version 2, fixed genotype boundaries version 2 method. I prefer to add the, the analysis method to the name of the folder where I saved the chip files in case I want to compare different versions of the results. Once you've selected that, then hit OK. When genotyping completes, the chip summary table will open.